Um, boy, what a morning we are having for the last morning of the year. Now, a few texts I want to deal with. Uh, tell me if we are clever, can we use the platform plus on the airplane? Hugh, you can. What you can do is you can download the bits you want to hear, and maybe you want to download the Dennis interview. Maybe you want to download the Winston Peters interview. They are stored on your phone in the Platform Plus app, but to hear them, once you've downloaded them in your, what's it called, My Platform or My Downloads section, um, you can go back and get them, and you do not need the interweb, so you can be on airplane setting inside the Platform Plus app, and you can listen on the on the plane, Right? So I say knock yourself out, but you have to be a Platform Plus member. And I really do need, I, I'm not kidding you guys, if more of you don't get on board with the Platform Plus, the platform will not survive. We have to wash our face. We have to make money. And we know we have got literally millions and millions of people downloading, watching, reading every month. Um, but I'll be honest, we live in a business environment where because of political correctness, I talk to owners and people in businesses who love what we do, but they are afraid of cancel culture. And this has been a challenge for new media companies operating in the sort of space we are operating in all over the world. Uh, Quillette, Claire, Claire Lamon from Quillette has written a, a piece about the challenges of this. And it is subscribers, it is people like you spending less than half of the cost of half a price of cof cup of coffee a week that will um, keep the platform going and allow us to do things the way we do them, which I would like to think has been a bit different uh, this year. Um, and I have had an interesting year learning about a lot more about business than I ever thought I would have to and learning to run a business, not always perfectly. Um, and also we've covered a lot of business this year as we've emerged from the darkest days of COVID and supply chain issues one might have thought life got back to normal, but it hasn't really. And one of the people we've talked to often to judge sort of the mood of the boardman, boardroom, the shop floor, uh, the high street, has been Kirk Hope, who is the head of Business New Zealand, the country's uh, preeminent uh, business advocacy organisation. And Kirk uh, joins us on the line now. Mate, how are you? Um, pretty much like everybody, looking forward to taking <laughs> you can a break. See that for finish line. Have you knocked off for the year? Not quite, not quite. We've got a, still got a few things going on. So, um, like, like with, um, like with other businesses, uh, we had a pretty major flood in our building, which put us out of our premises for uh, until February. So we've had to. Yeah, I heard about that, of, Kirk. Uh, Was yeah, that just bad yeah, luck so or, or, or industrial espionage? <laughs> yeah, bad luck. Bad luck. Um, so we so we had to sort of race around and, and fix a few things and, and look at that, which um, just adds on adds to things that you're already having to do in what has been quite a difficult year. So I know a lot of businesses um, have faced a lot of really uh, difficult uh, and challenging circumstances over the year. Mm. Um, I, I guess you know we've seen uh, some pretty significant labour shortages and they remain. Um, and then. You know, when things happen like that, which you haven't necessarily planned for, you know, you might have insurance for it, but if you're racing around trying to find premises, it just kind of has added a bit of additional pressure to, to what I think has been a tough year, and no doubt other businesses have faced that sort of thing too. Thematically, Kirk, I look, I, I mean, I can remember last Christmas, the spirit of last Christmas, it was like we were getting out of COVID, you know, the sun was going to shine, everything was going to be fine. But really, I'd have to say, looking back on this year, particularly in the coverage we've done of business, we haven't got to back to normal as smoothly, as quickly as we might want. And it would seem to me, when we, you talk, mentioned labour shortages, that the government has not been as responsive to the new problems that has emerged and as rapid in its response as it might have been. And immigration uh, settings are the absolute obvious standout issue there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it is pretty interesting. I mean, they were, they were heralded in the, in the first stage of COVID, if you like, in 2020, and, you know, got that strong election result. 2021, very, very much slower to respond and, and certainly this year i mean i recall uh kind of coming back to work on the 6th of january to talk to businesses about how well prepared we felt we were for omicron um 
because of course that's what we're standing down the barrel of. Um, and, and again, you know, the board didn't open until probably till July. So it, it, has, it has been a stop start sort of year. And of course, alongside labour shortages, you've had um, businesses and people's lives affected by getting COVID much more than what we've seen uh, in the previous two years. So those things have created a real intermittency, I think, to, uh, to the year. And, um, and made it a lot harder than maybe we thought it would be. All right. There have also been some big policy changes and some new legislation that I know you people have argued against vociferously and may indeed change the profitability or the viability of some businesses. That's fair pay agreements and now the work insurance proposal. Yeah, so there's probably two things, two quite different things. So I'll, I'll talk about the fair pay agreements. Uh, we actually call them compulsory national pay schemes. Um, we were we were against them for a whole bunch of reasons. What, one of which is um, we felt that it was a, a breach of um, a breach of people's rights to be forced to the table. I mean, obviously if, uh, there are a whole lot of uh, details to that, but, but the bottom line is um, bargaining should be voluntary and uh, and effectively the fair pay agreement legislation forces employers to be represented and be at the table even if they have no interest in these things. I guess the the only upside is that there's no strikes attached to fair pay agreements but there are some, you know, there are a range of issues like regional differences in in payment, uh, representation for smaller businesses, how do they get representation? Uh, So we've been out there sort of talking a lot to to businesses that are members and non-members around the country through the Business New Zealand Network just so that they understand. Um, We we understand there's probably only been uh, two initiations so far, one for the hospitality, uh, one for the hospitality industry, and, and one for, of course, bus drivers, which we always knew was going to be one of the first cabs off the van. Mm. Uh, All right. So, on balance, then, what do you say, Kirk? It could have been a better year. The recovery could have gone better for businesses. You look at I me. Mean, I think. I think if you look at uh, a whole lot of data, right? <laughs> Which is, of course, what we're trying to do all the time. There's a few things that have this business has still been doing quite well this year, um, despite some of those extreme challenges that they've faced. Um, you know, these these conditions haven't been helped, of course, by external conditions like you know the Russia-Ukraine war, which is having a real impact around the world. China still being locked down, so global production being much lower than what you'd anticipate. And therefore, those two things increasing inflation uh, in the tradable sector. So that, that's had an impact on the prices that we pay for things in New Zealand. Labour shortages have driven labour prices up in New Zealand. So again, that's, that's non-tradable inflation. That's, and that's an, again impacted on prices that we pay in New Zealand. So those things are all kind of having a, having a pretty significant impact. I guess the thing is to, to think about for your listeners, Sean, is what to look out for next year. We've got rising interest rates, so we want to make sure that people have enough, particularly businesses, cash flow liquidity, um, to make sure that they can um, sustain their asset base, continue to grow their business. We've got an election, and therefore you would expect investment to slow down as people go, this is quite, I don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. If there's some policies here I don't know about, <coughs> because we have a new government, or indeed we have a different form of government, uh, and, I've, and I've put a lot of my capital into this investment, is it going to play out quite the way I thought? So well, there um, is the other possibility years. that could actually work in favour if the polls show a very clear result for uh, one certain outcome it might be that that bolsters investor confidence. Yeah, typically even that we, we don't really see. Uh, we see investment dampening in investment. And one of the challenges, Sean, of course, is what we've seen with polls is that sometimes they can be wrong um, mm. and, and things can be a bit closer than you think. So, so look, I mean, I think those are all things to, mm. to be looking out for next year. Is the supply um, chain but, problem over, Kirk? Are we back to normal no. there or not? No, no. I mean, I think businesses are still paying pretty high prices for supply chain issues and, and for uh, for goods, right? Because, again, China, having been locked down for so long, has really decreased uh, global 
production fair stuff that we would be bringing into the country, and people are feeling the, feeling the impacts of that. We, as, as China opens up and starting to see some green shoots here, I think that makes a big difference for um, that will make a big difference to, to global inflation and to indeed New Zealand, the inflationary situation in New Zealand as well. Mm. Um, you've had a busy year too, Kirk, and uh, as I know, uh, ending with this flood at your HQ in Wellington. Uh, personal note, you also got married finally, um, which is a good thing. Um, are you planning on a big break? Is it one of those years you feel, geez, as you said, I can see the finish line, you break the tape and you just kick back and get back into it for what is going to be a huge year next year, 2023? Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, you know, I've said for my entire thing that we need to take a break. It's been a, it's been, um, a long year for them as well. Uh, you know, they're bearing the front of carrying a lot of these, uh, a lot of the policy work that we do. Uh, I intend to take as long a break as I can, um, which hopefully will be for three weeks, uh, and then get back into it. Like you say, it's going to be a big year. Uh, we've got an election conference next year that we run, which is, which is pretty big. We, you know, have most of the key spokespeople for all the parties um, who who will be interviewed and, uh, for an audience. Uh, so so that's um, that's a big thing for us, of course, and for our for our members. So uh, and of course the election uh, and what we see with um, COVID, um, uh, which will still continue, I think, to play a, a significant role in our lives. Uh, Kirk, best to you and yours. Thank you to all your staff and other people associated who appear regularly on the platform. And we look forward to chatting again uh, in the new year. Thanks, Sean. I hope you and the platform team have a, have a great Christmas. You guys have had a big year. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoy a break too, mate. Yeah, we'll be back. That is Kirk Hope from Business uh, New Zealand, um, the preeminent business lobbying uh, and advisory group in New Zealand. Um, and it has been rugged has been rugged for business and they had, yeah, I think it was the water at the top of their building in downtown Wellington, one of the things burst in the whole building's done. Computers, v v v v